Hello and welcome to Chat ENG. It's a day before the semi-final of the European Championships for England. Uh, we play Holland, of course, and normally in the past there's there's been like a wave of optimism uh, and goodwill and uh, football's coming home and St George flags everywhere and it's definitely something a bit different about this tournament and I don't know if it's the way the team has played. I don't know if it's the way we've got there. The fact that we've been stodgy, we've been risk averse, we've been um, there's been no no real flair other than individual moments. And um, I think the perspective has changed because of the progress that we've made over the last six years. I think six years ago, I'd have taken this all day long and have been absolutely bouncing. You know, and that's what I felt like six years ago. Is I couldn't wait for the England games to come around in the World Cup. It felt the same in the Euros. It felt the same in the World Cup in Qatar. Um, and I have had anticipation of all the games so far, but weirdly, the biggest one, the semi-final, is apprehension rather than excitement. And I'll come back to, to that in a, in a little bit. Uh, football is... is so so much about psychology and mindset. I mean, the England national football team are a, a walking case study of that. You know, we've had generation after generation of players who are who are not connected in any way other than the fact they've represented England, making the same mistakes, struggling with the same things. Managers who have been brilliant in their in their careers, who are completely different styles of play, again all making the same sort of mistakes. Uh, the, the whole thing with penalties and you know that can only be because of an identity crisis of a of an indoctrinated conditioned way of being and I think that's a problem for England and has been a problem for England and credit to Southgate I think he's made some real inroads with with aspects of that but the psychology around this team and I've said it before is for me that there almost seems a deliberate intent to hold something back and to not peak too early and to pace themselves. And that comes from the manager. When I've said previously, you know, I, I think that's that's the, the case. I don't mean that Southgate's giving them explicit in, um, instructions to say, boys, don't you dare move beyond that defensive line. Don't you, don't you dare pass the ball forward. Uh, only pass it sideways and backwards. Don't be making runs in behind and try to score a goal. I want us to stodge this out nil nil unless we absolutely have to score a goal, and we're going to show all these people that we can go to penalties and win it. I'm sure he hasn't explicitly said any of that, but the mindset of this manager, probably the body language has, but he has probably the instructions he gives. It's been interpreted by the team to to um, to result in what we've seen so far, and. It feels to me, especially based on Saturday's performance, that whilst there was an improvement, there's no urgency to win games. It looks to me there's a feeling of, well, we don't have to win it within 90 minutes. We, we don't even have to win it within 120. We're pretty confident with penalties now. So if it goes to penalties, it goes to penalties. I liken it to, you know, if, if, if it was the last game of the Premier League season and a team needed a draw to win the title, would their mindset be the same as if they needed to win to win the title? It wouldn't. In both scenarios, they would want to win. If you said, would you prefer to win or draw? They'd say, well, of course we prefer to win. They would want to win, but the psychology behind it is different because you only need a draw. And that's what it kind of looks like, I think, in some of the England games. It's like, well, we don't, we don't actually need to win the game. We don't need to play well. I've heard Southgate say that so many times. We don't need to play well. It's not just about that. And I think if a manager's giving that instruction, then the psychology behind the team is, well, we don't need to win. A draw will do us. We'll score a goal if we need to score a goal. That's what it looks like. And it's a risky business. Um, and, and I think if, if my hypothesis is right, that I think Southgate has changed the psychology in terms of let's not peak too early, let's not get carried away, let's pace ourselves, let's leave something in the tank, let's not expend too much emotional energy, then we're in the semi-final now. And now is the time to go close to leaving absolutely everything out there. I think when you're given favourable draws with no disrespect to the teams that we've played, 
most managers, most countries would just would go out and say, let's, let's get the game won. Um, and I reiterate what I said in the video the other day. I, I'm by no means being disrespectful to the teams we've played. We have no divine right to go and thrash teams and go and walk over teams. But my, my point is I'm seeing no intent to score goals. We've, we didn't create one chance in 120 minutes on Saturday. And it didn't look like we were intending to. It wasn't like we were painstakingly knocking on the door and it just wasn't happening for, happening for us. It doesn't look like there's any um, structure to our attacking play that that would make chances. It's all about individual players who have got magic in their boots, who can do something special, like Bellingham getting the equaliser against Slovakia, like Saka getting the equaliser the other day. That's not about patterns of play or things they've worked on in training. That's just an individual grasping the bull by the horns and, thank God, saving our bacon. International football can be like that, you know. Um, Argentina won the World Cup like that, and, and they weren't complaining at, complaining at the time. So, I'm aware there's a dynamic there, and you know I'm also aware of the dynamic that in international football tournaments it is different to the Premier League. It's different to the Champions League. It's there are games of attrition. There are times where you have to be very patient. You have to move teams around and. There's no mugs out there anymore, as I mentioned in one of my other videos. Um, I get all that, but I saw a Switzerland team, particularly in the 90, 90 minutes, within the 90 minutes, look like they wanted to win. Looked like they had an intent to try and win the game. And I saw an England team who, from, from minute one, really were playing for penalties. Unless we needed to score, which obviously we did in, in the end because Switzerland scored. There was no intent to even try and get in behind and break lines and score goals. And it's just strange. Southgate's always been pragmatic, but the teams always, if they could, if they spotted a chance, they've tried to go and hurt teams and attack teams. It seems the only style of play, really, is just keep the ball. And I think that's to protect our defence, because I think the manager's probably a bit worried about the defence. Um, but there's no patterns of play to try and break teams down. There's no runs being made that will hurt teams. And that's been a feature throughout the whole tournament. That's never particularly got any better. And I think with Kane in the team, it's very difficult for that to change. And Kane will be in the team, without question, unless he's injured. And even then, I think Southgate would probably play him if he was 60% fit. So, I going into the semi-final against Holland, I keep hearing things like, well, the Dutch will suit England because they'll, they come out and play, they come out and attack, they want to try and win the game. They express themselves, so that'll leave a more open game. Leave a more open game for who and what. what. What have we seen so far? What evidence have we seen that England want to go and try and hurt teams? Who's the players that are going to run in behind on the counter-attack? Is anyone close enough to Harry Kane, if he comes deep, to go and run in behind if we have spells of possession? Which quick wingers do we have, which are cutting inside, which are going to go and hurt Holland down the middle? Virgil van Dijk is going to have the easiest easiest evening of the, of the tournament for himself against Harry Kane. Because if it's a physical battle, he'll win it all day long. And um, Van Dijk is still really quick. But you could make it uncomfortable for him. You could take him to places he doesn't want to go if you have more centrally quick, if you have players that are quick centrally. But we haven't. We haven't. And my take on this game is if, if we, I think we'll try and keep possession and move them around. And if we do that, Holland will just retreat and say, OK, you do that and then we'll kill you on the counter-attack because they've got quite good players on the counter-attack. Um, and we won't be able to break them down because, as I say, we don't have any formula. It doesn't look like we've formulated any patterns of play that can do that. And if Holland get the... Um, if, if, if they are the team in control, can we withstand attack after attack after attack? We've not had to do that because we've just kept the ball so far, really. And when we have been attacked on, we've looked pretty vulnerable. Um, so then, okay, there's this chance for uh, for counter attacks for England, but again, with who? We're so deep, we don't look like a counter attacking team. So uh, 
I, I struggle to, to see where we're going to score a goal or where we're going to create any chances based on what I've seen so far. And, and what will happen is our special players like Foden, Bellingham, Saka, maybe even Maynu, space will be there for them to do something special. So maybe that could be different. But this England team doesn't look like a team that's set up to counter-attack. It's not set up to dominate games and make chances. It's just set up to dominate possession and sit deep once we've got the lead and see if we can hang on. And I don't think that that does suit this game at all. I think Holland, on paper, should be second favourites, but I think they're, I think they're favourites. And you know they they're vulnerable. Holland, and you look. Did Austria score three goals against them? I think um, Turkey did well against them the other night. Uh, they've been involved in some of the more entertaining games, but they've scored three goals against Romania. They will come at you. If, if you give them the chance, they'll come at you. And I think Southgate will be looking to negate that rather than look at their vulnerabilities. Um, or maybe we're going to peak. Not not necessarily peak, but get, get better. Because if my um, prediction is right about what Southgate's been doing, then that has to happen sometime. And the semi-final, you know, you won away from a final. By hook or by crook, we've got to get through. And so far, we've managed to do that. But Holland will not just sit there and let a war of attrition play out. They've played an hour less than us. And they're probably relatively fresh. And I think they'll come, at, they'll come after England and they'll try and hurt England. And if we had the courage to go and counter-attack, then great. But I don't think we have. Looking at their team, there's, I mean, they've got about Veghorst up front. So they're a functional team that I think the fact they're in the semi final shows the probably the lack of quality in this tournament. Gakpo's good. Depay is a talented player who's never really fulfilled his potential. But am I right in thinking I think Daly Blind is in the squad? Um. I said the other day uh, when I just flicked back to chat UCD to celebrate a year of the channel that Zerki um, wasn't at the Euros, but of course he is, he plays for Holland, but he's not really played that much. Uh, so they're not an, an, a team that would particularly worry you on paper, but Holland always have technically gifted players and they always, I think, try and, and, and attack teams and, and hurt teams. But in this tournament, certainly that's been their strength. They finished third in their group. We should be getting through this game. But as I say, I'm, I'm just basing it off the evidence that I've seen so far. I'd like to see some more courage from the England players. And you could say, what you want about it? Did you see them take penalties? There's different types of courage. They were incredibly courageous taking those penalties. And it was brilliant to see it. But I want to see people go and try and try and score goals. Try and take players on. Play, play like Cole Palmer. Get the ball and your first thought is, I'm going to try and attack you and expose you and leave you on your backside. You've got Foden, you've got Bellingham, you've got Saki, you've got Palmer can come off the bench. Mainu is a, is a brilliant dribbler with the ball. This is the time now, I think, for individuals to use their common sense and use their discretion. And I'm not saying break rank in terms of don't listen to whatever the manager says because he's your manager. And I think they've been incredibly respectful of him so far because of, this isn't the way these players play for their club teams and I think they're playing within themselves but now's the time to take responsibility and of course play with a framework play with a system play with an ethos that's set by the manager and that's that psychology I mentioned before but there has to be individual moments where people break free of that and that's that's what's got us to, to where we are now Saka and Bellingham particularly Saka just doing something different and that's what they're capable of we go a goal down particularly against Switzerland and Saka thinks throw the game plan out the window let me just give me the ball I'm going to try and make something happen and that's what's got us to where we are now you can talk about character you can talk about being patient you can talk about all the different things that Southgate spoke about individual players have dug us out of holes and that's great because we've got those players and that's okay but don't call it something it's not To end on a positive, I think what Southgate has done in terms of psychology is England look now like 
we don't panic when we go a goal down, probably because of those individual players. Um, we are prepared to take the long route, which I don't particularly like, but nonetheless, I don't think that's always been the case, that if it got, went to extra time, um, we'd always be vulnerable. And I think, you know, we'd, if it went to penalties, you were done. And the, the psychology around penalties is very different. You can see that. Uh, there is a toughness, I suppose, there. Um, and I think the psychology of playing for England in general is different to how it used to be in that there, there looks to be a togetherness and a pride and a, a club mentality. And, and I think he's trying to do away with a lot of the things that have, have, um, have led to England failing in the past. And, and some, some of the things that I think have gone wrong in this tournament have been because of his, his pretty good intentions of trying to just, as I say, pace yourself, don't get too high too soon and all that kind of stuff. But I believe, as I've said before, I think we've gone too far the other way. I think we've, we look like a team that's playing with a handbrake on with no real intent of taking it off. Um, so credit Southgate for it. He's done a fantastic job with England and, and people can disagree and that's fine. But this is a huge opportunity for England. We're in the semi-final against the team that finished third in their group and are probably waiting for their next generation of, of stars to come through, that this isn't a great Holland team. And yet I think we're second favourites based on what I've seen so far. Um, I hope I'm wrong and I hope obviously we win. But they'll have to produce something they haven't produced so far to do that. Let's hope they do. And that finally it's coming home.